you know, high, it's warm. So it's good that water doesn't just vaporize uh, very easily. And the reason is because of the hydrogen bonding. So here's an interesting, very interesting example. Um, so you, you probably heard uh, that if you boil water by itself, it takes longer to boil if you don't add salt to it, right? You've heard that. But why? Who can explain to me why? Based on what you <coughs> learned in this chapter, why do you think that adding salt to water will make it boil faster? What does water do with an ionic compound? We just talked about it. Forms what? Hydration spheres. That's good, yes. <laughs> it does form hydration spheres. When it forms hydration spheres, what's it going to do to the hydrogen bonds? Is it going to increase the number of them or decrease? There's just two choices. You can choose one, and if you're wrong, I'll just say or, and then you choose the right one. <laughs> That's how, I, how it works. Okay, so look, so just logically take a look at this now um, okay so if you're forming a hydration sphere right can we have as many hydrogen bonds between these water molecules no you can't because for example here this this water molecule can't really hydrogen bond over here or this can't hydrogen bond here so basically what happens is is when water has to to interact with something else, it can't form as many hydrogen bonds. And remember I said that there are strength in numbers. The fact that pure water has a certain number of hydrogen bonds is going to be the reason why it takes longer for it to boil. When you add salt, you disrupt the number of hydrogen bonds and ultimately the, the heat of vaporization level is going to drop a little bit. So it doesn't take as much heat energy to get it to boil. Does that make sense? Any questions? Okay. Um, and lastly, it's less dense in solid than liquid form. This is a really cool property of water. When you think about it, right, you have a glass of water and, you know, it's, it's fine. Your water molecules are hydrogen bonding with each other, they, they take on the shape of the glass, and then you put an ice cube in the water, which is also water, but it's in solid form, what's the ice cube do? It Displaces the water. Say what? I said displaces the water. Well, it displaces That's not what right. you were getting at. That's not what I was getting at, but no, you're right, it does displace the water, but it floats, it floats in water, because it's less dense when water is in an ice solid form, than when it's in its liquid form, which is very peculiar. But the reason for this is, again, because of hydrogen bonding. What happens is when we, well, when we're, we're, we're looking at water that's fluid, the water molecules are moving around each other and hydrogen bonds are breaking and reforming. But when water freezes, now, wherever the hydrogen bonds were, wherever they were, that's, basically where they stop, they, they freeze. So you have, because of the hydrogen bonding, you have space, basically air space in between the water molecules. So therefore, it's going to be less dense when it's in a solid form than a liquid form. You're not gonna have as many water molecules per given space because of hydrogen bonding. Okay, so that concludes our discussion on bonds. Do you have any questions about anything? All right, well, now we're moving on to acids, bases, and the pH scale. So this, uh, <coughs> excuse me, these first two definitions are the thing that you really just want to remember. Um, I think if you remember this, then you can figure out any question and understand buffer systems and all of that. 
Uh, so it's very important that you understand that acids are molecules which release hydrogen into a solution, okay? And sometimes we call the hydrogens protons because they, uh, they do not have their electron associated with them, so they have a positive charge. But for the sake of simplicity, we'll say acids release hydrogen into a solution. So an acid will become an acid once, I mean, it's an acid because it can go make hydrogen, but an acid isn't going to make something acidic until it releases the hydrogens. Bases lower the hydrogen levels. They act like hydrogen sponges. They take up hydrogen. So the pH scale, the, 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 the actual name pH, which uh, has a lower case P in front of an uppercase high H, stands for potential hydrogen. So the P, the lowercase P stands for potential, the uppercase H is, it stands for hydrogen and it's the atomic symbol. So pH is uh, really, when we're looking at it, sometimes it's nice to, to see that uh, we're really looking at numbers of hydrogen ions that we have in a particular solution, whether it be more or less. So as a general rule, I'll write this on the board. As a general rule, aside from remembering that acids are molecules that can release uh, hydrogens into the solution and bases take up the hydrogens, another thing to remember is that on the pH scale, which we're going to talk about, as you increase the number, the pH number, you're decreasing hydrogens and increasing the basicity. And then the inverse is true. As we decrease the pH number, we actually increase the hydrogens that we have in the solution and we increase acidity. So the more hydrogens we have, the more acidic a particular solution is going to be. So some acids which can donate hydrogens to solution include hydrochloric acid, HCl, um, phosphoric acid, nitric acid. These we're not going to be talking about too much in this class, but we will be talking about this one, carbonic acid. Carbonic acid we talk about three times in this class. First time will be today. Second time when we talk about enzymes and the third time when we talk about respiration. So carbonic acid is a very important uh, acid. It's actually a weak acid. Um, so that means it can release its hydrogens very readily. So if I were you, I'd highlight carbonic acid and start to remember the formula H2CO3. That would be beneficial to you. Some bases include sodium hydroxide, NaOH, potassium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, um, and, and so forth. So, and then also bicarbonate, which isn't listed here, but we will be talking about actually shortly. Okay, so as I said before, pH stands for potential hydrogen in the solution. The scale itself runs from zero to 14. So as I said, as you increase the number on the pH scale, say you're at like 14 or whatever, that's gonna be the most basic pH. Zero is the most acidic. So essentially, uh, what I wrote on the board is true. As you increase the pH number, you decrease the amount of hydrogen and you increase the basicity. If you drop the pH number, you increase hydrogen and you increase acidity. So again, if you remember that, then the rest should be pretty easy. 
So zero is the most acidic, 14 is the most basic. So pure water is neutral and has a pH of seven. And on the next slide, we're gonna see why we say that water is neutral, what makes it neutral. Um, there's a nice uh, diagram on the next, the next slide that actually shows us this. So I'm not gonna talk about it too much. There is one correction I want you to make. Um, it says here acids have a pH of uh, less than seven, which is true, but an acidic pH would be between zero and pretty much 6.9, okay, not seven. Zero and 6.9. Bases have a pH greater than seven, so it would be basically eight to 14, not seven to 14. Any questions about that so far? Okay, so this diagram uh, shows us the concentration of hydrogen over here in, uh, in its molar concentration. This shows us the molar concentration of hydroxide, OH, at various pHs on the scale. So I'm gonna focus on the hydrogen because I think this is the easier one to look at first. So if you look at a pH of zero, the molar concentration of hydrogen is one. That is, um, that's the most acidic we can get. As we continue up the pH scale, notice that our hydrogen numbers get smaller and smaller. Remember, as we move to the right of the decimal point, we get smaller and smaller. The more zeros that we have, the smaller the number is. So at a pH of one, we actually have 10 to the minus one molar concentration of hydrogen. The, the negative exponent tells us how many spaces to the right of the decimal we go. So 10 to the negative one, means that our one is one space to the right of the decimal. So pH of two, it's 10 to the negative two molar concentration. pH of three, 10 to the negative three, and so forth and so on. Now if we take a look at the hydroxide uh, side, uh, we can see that at a pH of zero, we have the smallest amount of hydroxide. But when we get to a pH of 14, now we have a molar concentration of one because that's the most basic. See, so it's actually the inverse, right? Because at a pH of zero, we're most acidic. At a pH of 14, we're the most basic. But what happens at a pH, so what happens at a pH of seven? Let's take a look first at a pH of six. So six is still considered what? Acidic or basic? Acidic, <coughs> excuse me, what, I'm sorry, what did you say? <laughs> acidic, right, it's still acidic. Okay, so if we take a look, we have a 10 to the minus six molar concentration of hydrogen, but we have a 10 to the minus eight molar concentration of hydroxide. So which one is greater, 10 to the minus six or 10 to the minus eight? 10 to the minus six, right, because 10 to the minus six is 0 0.00001. 10 to the minus eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you see that we're further to the right of the decimal at 10 to the minus eight than we are at 10 to the minus six. So what this is telling us is that, oh, you know what, this didn't work yesterday. She must have given me all new ones. I wonder if I got a good purple one. Oh wait, yeah, no, no, these, these look fresh. Boy, she always has me covered. Okay, so anyway, if you look at a pH of six, you have more hydrogen than you have hydroxide. When we get past the pH of seven, the pH of eight, now the inverse is true. Now we have 10 to the minus eight molar concentration of hydrogen, and we have 10 to the um, minus six molar concentration of hydroxide. So which one's greater now at a pH of eight? Hydroxide or hydrogen? Hydroxide. 
Right, so that's why after a pH of seven, we get to a pH of eight, that is now on the basic side of things, okay? But what about a pH of seven? pH of seven is neutral because we have the same concentration of hydrogen as we do hydroxide, 10 to the minus seven. It's the same, it's neutral. Make sense? Now, you don't have to memorize this whole chart, but I could ask you a question. Usually I'm gonna focus on the hydrogen side of things. I might ask you a question like, uh, what is the molar concentration of hydrogen at a pH of, say, 12? And what would it be? 10 to the minus 12, right? Remember, just like we said here, that's where you get the pH number. It's because of the molar concentration of hydrogen. So pH of 1, you have 10 to the minus 1. pH of 2, 10 to the minus 2. pH of 3, 10 to the minus 3, and so forth and so on. Do you have any questions there? You guys still with me? I don't do chemistry. I'm sorry. No, he's, he's, you don't do chemistry? What, what's the problem? Okay, okay, I got that. I got that. Now, I, okay, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna liven it up a little bit here. So I wore my shirt. Can everybody see what it says? Yeah, see? Everybody over there see it? It says, you're a 10, maybe on the pH scale because you're basic. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, so you'll remember that now. Like, okay, 10 basic, <laughs> right? Now what? Is that better? Did I liven it up some, make it a little less boring? Okay, but now we're back to boring again. <laughs> All right. Well, if you guys, if you understand this part, that's, that's good. If, if you have any questions, please do stop me and ask. Because this next one is going to give you a little mental calisthenic for your brain here. Um, we're going to talk about next this topic, and after this, maybe we, I don't know, if we need a break, we could take one. Um, but this is all about buffer systems. What's a buffer? Anybody know? Even think about it in terms of just, you know, daily language. What's a buffer? How would you describe a buffer or, or define it? I wouldn't say to make something clear, but anything, huh? Make something, be okay, I see what you're saying there. Um, you're getting a little warmer. Mm -hmm. I don't like slow, like when you stream video and oh, it's just reverse. Oh, yeah, I got, I got what you're saying. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're talking like technology-wise. Okay, well, all right, let me give you, let me give you a little example before I we define it. Um, so like in daily life, you know people, and you know, again, how people sometimes can really make you nervous, you know. And sometimes you're in a group for example, I have my good friend Courtney, my other good friend Connie. Sometimes there's, you know, me with them, and I always know when the conversation turns to politics that look out, you know, because the conversation will go from zero to 100 with just one name, right? And, okay, so me, you know, I, I, I try to keep it you know, in balance, I try to keep everything in balance. So I'll try to say something like, hey, why don't we go to Wendy's? Or, you know, something like, I mean, you know, something just, or, you know, or, uh, or hey, did you see that guy? He was naked, you know, like just some, you know, even though there was nobody naked, it's just the idea to change the subject really quick, right? Because I'm telling you, I've been in the middle of these things and they're not pretty. And sometimes they go on for a while and put in earplugs. So the bottom line is, um, 
in that situation, I'm keeping, uh, I guess, the emotional uh, climate neutral, right? I'm buffering that situation by keeping things status quo, right? Keeping the peace. That's basically the way that I would, in terms of human interactions and and physiological chemical buffers, like we're talking about here, very much the same thing. Of course, the aim is different. My aim was to keep my two best friends so that they won't hurt each other because we've known each other since first grade, so you know, there's no point in destroying a relationship over politics. But in physiological systems, there is a reason to keep peace as well. Peace also known as homeostasis. So blood pH must be between a particular range, um, which we just talked about. We said that, you know, before a pH of seven, everything's acidic, and then anything higher than a pH of seven is basic. But in the blood, the pH range has to be between a very narrow window of neutral. It can't be between seven and eight or six and seven. It actually is between 7.2, yes, 7.35 and 7.45. Very good, okay. So anything that is below 7.35 would be what? Consid I mean, even though it's a neutral range, would it be acidic or basic? Too acidic, great. Anything above 7.45 then, like say 7.6, would be too what? Basic, very good. Okay, so how do we keep things in, in range? Well, there are a couple of different ways. The, the kidneys can help a lot because the kidneys can get rid of excess hydrogen that's in your blood, but your respiratory system also helps. And that's basically what this whole equation's about. Now, we're gonna get into this first part of the equation and what it means and what it's all about a little bit later on down the road in the course. What I really wanna focus on for now is this part of it. So notice that the arrows here are bi-directional, which means that these reactions that are here will go in either direction depending upon the circumstance. So does anybody remember, I mentioned this a little while ago, I said you should start to remember this chemical formula, H2CO3. Do you remember uh, what, what chemical that is, what compound that is? Carbonic acid, excellent, good. So carbonic acid, and H is for hydrogen, of course. Anybody know what HCO3 is? What is it? Pop, pop, fizz, fizz, oh, what a relief it is. Um, Alpha seltzer? Yeah, which is what? Made up of what? Um, yeah, acid. Which is what? <laughs> really big. I mean, you're completely right, but, it, but, but what I'm asking is, what is Alka-Seltzer? Alka-Seltzer is bicarb, bicarbonate. What's bicarbonate do? You said it's an antacid, it, it sucks up acid in your stomach, you know, and you have reflux or something, right? So bicarbonate, sucks up acid. So in this case then, uh, bicarbonate, would you say is it an acid or a base? If it takes up hydrogens, is it an acid or a base? It's a base. It's a base, very good. It is a base, very good. All right, so carbonic acid, of course, is an acid, which means it can donate hydrogens to our solution. So essentially, Buffer systems are um, going to, again, uh, keep things in a homeostatic range in the blood between 7.35 and 7.45, um, and uh, they, these reactions will go in one direction or the other depending on the circumstance. So now I'm gonna say, all right, if we had a blood pH, okay, and again, I'm just looking at this part over here of this reaction, I'm, we'll, we'll talk about that later, but right here. Um, so if we had a situation where the, the blood pH became too acidic, so 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 7.2, 
7.2. Which direction, in order to maintain homeostasis, in order to get us back up to 7.35, which direction will this reaction proceed? To the right or to the left? Very good. Why? Why? I'm not punishing you because you got it right. Why? Huh? Wait, I'm sorry, what did you say? You couldn't hear anything? What I said? Or what? Which side? Right was the answer. Yeah. Oh, I said right when she said left. Right? Didn't you say left? Yeah. You said uh, Now left. I'm really confused. Yeah, now I'm confused. I mean, the whole thing has gone up in smoke. I don't even know what we're talking about. No. All right, so you said left, right, Lauren? Didn't you say left? Yeah. yeah. Left was correct, not right. Yes. Left was correct. I have to watch that when we talk about this. I always forget. Okay. So why was my next question? Okay, so again, our pH, so our pH range 7.35 to 7.45. I said, okay, the, the blood pH drops to 7.2. So which direction does this go? Does it go to the right? Does it go to the left? Lauren says that it goes to the left, which is correct. So why? Why would it go to the left? If it's too acidic, that means we have too much what? Too much hydrogen. Right? We have too much of this floating around on its own. So if that's the case, we need to suck some of it up. It's like if you spill milk, you need a sponge, you wipe it up, right? It's too much milk outside the glass. Here, the pH is too acidic, so we have too much hydrogen. Bicarbonate has to take it up. So when HCO3 combines with another hydrogen, now we have two hydrogens and it becomes H2CO3, which is carbonic acid, okay? So the reaction will go to the left. Likewise, if we have a pH that goes to 7.5, okay, now our pH in the blood is to what? Basic, so we need to release more hydrogens to the solution. So which direction does it go? To the right. So now we release the hydrogen, which is what carbonic acid can do because it's an acid, it can donate hydrogen. And now we have more hydrogen floating around and we have bicarbonate ready just in case we get too acidic again. That make sense? Yeah. You said, yeah, well, that's good. Anybody have a question about that? Let's, let, we'll do it one more time. Okay, so which direction does it go if the pH becomes too basic, right or left? Mm -hmm to the right, that's correct. So another question I could ask is, what would form if the pH becomes too basic? You would say hydrogen and bicarbonate, right? So if the pH becomes then too acidic, what's gonna form? See, this is the trick part, and this is what confuses people sometimes. If the pH becomes too acidic, which direction are we gonna go? To the left. And what do we form? We form what? Carbonic acid. So you might say to yourself, but if it's too acidic, why are we forming an acid? Remember the definition I told you to remember from the first slide? Remember the definition. An acid, by itself, just having an acid here in the solution, just because the word acid is attached to it, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that that is making it acidic. It has a potential to, because what do acids do? They can donate hydrogens to a solution, okay? But if the hydrogen is taken up as carbonic acid, then we've actually lowered the pH. But if the pH becomes too basic, carbonic acid can now donate the hydrogens again and make it more acidic. Do you have questions about this? Okay, so um, that is it for buffers and uh, the last slide and then we'll take a 10 minute break. Um, our normal pH range, as we said, is between 7.35 and 7.45, which is maintained by our buffering action, uh, as we just described. If uh, we can use the term acidosis and alkalosis in a couple of ways. In general, acidosis is used if a pH 
uh, in the blood gets lower than 7.35. Alkalosis if the pH is above 7.45. It's too alkaline or basic. Um, we can also use the terms uh, respiratory or metabolic in front of these terms. Respiratory acidosis and alkalosis occur because of, of carbon dioxide levels. So it has to do with carbon dioxide and respiration. Um, metabolic acidosis or alkalosis has to do with um, metabolites, things like um, urea or, um, I'm trying to think, I can't think of any now, creatine the things that can make your blood more acidic if you can't get rid of them. So generally, if a person goes into kidney failure, they can develop a metabolic acidosis, for example. So anyway, that's just sort of an aside, and we talk about respiration in lab later on, we'll be discussing the differences more um, specifically. Okay, any questions about anything? Okay, go ahead and take 10. Get some air.